I figured it's about time to do a one year review on the Teramite P5C fine loader backhoe because I've had it almost a year. Tomorrow will be the one year anniversary of getting it. So let's fire it up and um, drive it down to the field and we'll do a walk around and I'll tell you what I think about it. So I've had this backhoe for about a year now, and we paid $3,800 for it. And here's basically what I think about this machine. I think it's a tremendous value for what we paid. Because to buy a tractor with a front end loader would have cost probably more than that for like a Kubota. And the front end loader on here has an 1,800 pound capacity somewhere around 1,800 pound capacity, which is more than a small Kubota. So it has a, a a higher capacity than a Kubota, but the machine costs less. And if you were to get a backhoe attachment for a Kubota, a backhoe attachment would probably cost you $3,000 um, or more if you got a brand new one. A used one, you might be able to find a really good deal for $1,000 or something. Um, I never found a good deal like that. Seems like $3,000 was probably maybe $2,500, nothing under $2,000. So, Really, this machine is just a tremendous value um, because you get the front end loader and you get the backhoe. And for the price we paid, which was $3,800, it would have been hard to have bought a front end loader tractor for that price or bought a backhoe attachment for the Kubota that we have in the family. So for me, it's been really great. I've used this machine a lot, not like commercially, like a rental company, but I have used it quite a bit. I've used it to move lots and lots of mowers to pick stuff up to do dirt work i've used the front end loader more like a bulldozer to try to just shove dirt around and that brings up another point this machine is only two-wheel drive most kubotas out there with the loaders on them if they're made within the last 20 30 years um and this size will be four-wheel drive four-wheel drive is nice to have this machine does a lot without four-wheel drive it has a limited slip rear differential so the rear differential, that means basically if one wheel starts slipping, the other wheel will pick up and they'll spin together. Um, and there's no driver input. It's just the way it works with the clutches or whatever in the, in the rear axle. So with these agricultural tires and the limited slip rear differential and the weight of the backhoe back there, this machine does really well um, for being two wheel drive. Now that said, there are scenarios where it'd be really nice to have four wheel drive, more particularly um, when you're trying to back up a hill, especially if you came downhill to get a scoop of dirt and now you're trying to back up that hill. Now you have a lot of weight in your front and you're going uphill. That's when the two wheel drive really shows up because you can't back uphill super great. You start slipping if it's too steep, but you can work around with that. You can work with it some. That's the biggest problem. But most of the time, the two wheel drive is fine. It does a good job, especially with those agricultural tires. I don't know how it would handle uh, with like turf tires. I haven't tried that yet. So that's kind of more talking about the overall functionality of the machine in general, why I bought it. An excavator, I would love to get an excavator, but those cost even more than just backhoe attachments for tractors. An excavator would have cost, gosh, probably upwards of 7,000 for anything that's usable. I mean, it depends on what size you get and how beat up they are, but you're probably looking at $10,000 for a decent used excavator, which would be depth wise, maybe similar, but way more useful than this backhoe. Cause this backhoe only has a, uh, I'm trying to remember, I think it's 135 degree range of motion. So it doesn't have a full 180, maybe it's 145. It still does really well for the range of motion it does have. But when you're digging around a lot, you notice you you can only if you're trenching you can only make a level bottom in the trench depending on the depth that makes a huge difference also but if you're going about a couple feet deep you can only make a level bottom in the trench for like maybe three foot to four foot practically speaking is what i found so you're constantly moving the machine because it's just a little backhoe it doesn't have um that much length to it 
and with it being a, a backhoe that means you have to turn around or push the pedal and the foot pedal and you have to raise your outriggers the foot pedal being the drive to move it forward so it's definitely not as convenient as an excavator and not as stable in some ways as an excavator straight front to back it's very stable but if you get too much sideways it won't be quite as stable and it's just not as heavy as a lot of excavators are so overall weight of this machine is about 3100 pounds so you can move it with pretty much any half ton pickup truck and maybe some of the newer quarter ton trucks so the engine power um, the engine in this is a 20 horse Kohler engine and it has enough power for what we're doing it would be nice I think to have something more powerful or maybe just get this engine refreshed at some point rebuilt but it does everything we need it to do and that kind of the engine is kind of the limiting factor as far as drive and like when you're digging because you can stall out the engine if you push it really hard but you can kind of work with that have it running, you know, running full throttle and go slow and you can hear it bog down and you kind of back off and that's probably one reason that helps the machine survive so long is having an engine that's slightly underpowered it keeps you from damaging the rest of the machine too much but it's a super simple easy to operate machine there's no gear shift um, you basically turn it on there's a choke and a throttle like you'd have on a, a lot of riding lawnmowers and then you just take your brake off and you just hit the pedal to drive forward there's no gear shift you want to go back you just hit the pedal to go backwards it's super easy to do that the front end loader is just a regular joystick for that and um, there's no two-wheel or four-wheel drive there's no differential locks so left foot there's nothing that it does there here's your brake your seat has this little rod you can pull to rotate it around and there's not a lot of foot room back here but you can put a foot there and one on the other side and the steering wheel is offset to the left so you can be working the loader with your right hand easily it's it works out pretty well. I may add a suicide knob on here to help spin this quicker. Here we've got the hour meter, 1,217 hours now. So here's the choke, push, pull, choke, pretty standard. This throttle is a little bit different from a regular lawnmower throttle because you, it's a push, pull throttle and you rotate to lock. I'm not sure, but that might be kind of like what airplanes use. I'm not sure. And there's the ignition. She's ready to run and start. Front end loader that has a nice decals there, it's easy to see what it does. And there's your drive pedal right here, forward, reverse. Doesn't get much simpler than that. And then back here, we have our outriggers. This is the left one, this is the right one, and these control the backhoe. So it's a very, very simple machine, easy to use. And your gas tank is in the hood, which is a funky design that totally works i mean it's entirely functional it does the job just fine it's super simple and easy to drive obviously i guess some machines would be a gear shift this is definitely not a gear shift there's no high low range it's just one range so you don't have to think about that um i like having options that's why i have a four-wheeler with three gear ranges and a five-speed transmission and four-wheel drive two-wheel drive and differential lock i have all that on my four-wheeler and I like that, um, but it's not necessary, especially for the price you pay. It's super simple, durable, reliable. Um, it's a gas engine, it's not a diesel, so if the engine goes out, we can buy another engine for probably less than $1,000 to put in there, or you could just rebuild the engine. It's a very simple setup. It's a very simple setup. It's all hydraulically driven. So. The engine drives a hydraulic pump, I believe, which drives a transmission drive motor, which goes to the back axle. And it's a heavy duty Dana axle. It's just a really nice machine. Now, I haven't done much of any work at all to this machine. So it has a lot of hydraulic leaks, which would be nice to get fixed, but they don't really stop me from doing what I want to do. So that's something I'd like to fix over the next year or two or however long. I was hoping I'd already have some of them fixed, but it just didn't work out that way. So fixing hydraulic leaks would be nice to do, but nothing has kept this machine from being fully functional for what I need it to do. So things will sag down and it could be the cylinders need to be rebuilt. It could be connections need to be tightened up. It could be a combination of both. The tires, they made, they had an optional tire that was a wider tire um, 
more like what you would see on like a ditch witch trencher, the big ones that you ride on, um, or even like a piggyback forklift for a truck. It's just a fatter tire, but still with an agricultural tread, which is like the R1 tread type. I don't think it's quite as aggressive as these tires, but similar and wider. I would like to try some tires out like that and maybe load them with ballast because that would help with the two wheel drive issues of backing up and just, it would help in general, just more pushing power. Um, so ballasting these tires or getting another set of wider tires mounted and possibly ballasted as well as something I'm considering. Maybe getting a set of old truck tires used as turf tires and having you know, the balloon tires. So I don't really know what I'm gonna do there yet. I bought a set of skid steer type tires for in the wider size, but I don't have any rims yet. They're like an R4 industrial tread pattern. I don't know if I'm even gonna use those or not. So tires is another area that this machine could be improved upon possibly, or I may want to change it. Um, other than that, the engine, I may need to refresh it or rebuild it at some point, but I don't really want to mess with it if I don't need to yet. It doesn't really use that much oil, so it's not really an issue right now. I do want to redo the fuel system. The hoses are kind of old and I don't really like the way they're set up. So I'd like to redo the fuel system. And other than that, the only work I've really done to this machine is replacing the front right tire and trying to clean out the fuel system to get it running. That's the majority of what I've done that's coming to mind and adding hydraulic fluid to it. That's really all I've had to do. And I've put, I'm not sure how many hours I'm out. It's just been a really great machine. I put forks on the front, the clamp on forks, and we use those all the time for moving the mowers around, which is a lot simpler than putting a bucket above a mower and chaining it and picking it up. My one year review is that this machine has been tremendous for the value that it is. And yes, there are other machines that would do a lot better at individual tasks, but for what we paid and what we got and what we've been able to do with it, I don't think we could have found a better machine out there. Yes, if I had had $10,000 to spend, I could have gotten a much nicer machine, but I didn't have $10,000 to spend on a machine, which would have meant I would have gone without a machine for this whole year or whatever. Um, I could probably turn around and sell this backhoe for $5,000, possibly $7,000, you know, five to seven. So it's not losing value and I'm getting good use out of it. So an excellent investment for working around the property and stuff like that. So let's go take a walk around it. You can see it came from Crosslands. So this was an X rental machine. So there's definitely some slop and play and some bushings, but it's just nothing that really affects what I'm doing with it that much. I would kind of like to get a set of teeth for the front bucket edge to help with digging dirt. So not just loading dirt, but like breaking ground. I think a set of teeth would help a lot. The trade-off is that then you can't back drag and level stuff as well, unless you take the teeth off. And um, when you are digging with the teeth, they they weigh something so they're reducing capacity and they're not that cheap we're probably talking several hundred dollars to get some teeth one more piece of work i did was i tightened up some flanges underneath here Let's see if we can get under here oh, i haven't checked these out in a while ah oh, here we go so the engine sits over here and it drives your hydraulic pump here which powers everything and here's your hydraulic motor that drives the rear axle and of course fluid comes off to power all the functions the um front and loader or backhoe let's see i think it's this flange right here i tightened up these bolts i think they call it a companion flange but those can get loose and you don't want to break stuff when they get loose this is the brake very very simple machine i highly recommend getting one if you are looking for something that's very practical and functional for the price, if you have more money and you can afford a Kubota B26 or something like that, I mean, yeah, that's gonna be a nicer machine. It's not gonna have a higher bucket capacity, officially. And the backhoe may not go quite as deep, but it's really similar and it's a four-wheel drive diesel. 
I think those are nice machines. I would consider upgrading to a B21 or B26 from this. For a BX series, I think this is more capable than a BX. So if you're just doing front unloader backhoe work, I think this is a little more capable. I don't have one to compare it to. We have a BX2360, but it doesn't have the weight of the backhoe on the back, so I'm not really sure how it'll compare. All in all, I'm very happy with this machine. It's far from perfect, but it's a very useful machine and we got it at a very practical price and it really does pretty much everything I want it to do. It's just slower than bigger machines would be, but at least I have this machine. It's faster than a shovel. If you need a bigger machine, you could always just rent one for a little while, but you can do a lot of small projects around the yard with this machine. It does not have a three point hitch, so if you wanna do box blades and stuff like that, or brush hogs, then you would need a regular subcompact tractor or compact tractor. This is more of a commercial industrial type machine. There's almost no plastic on here. Just a little bits of trim, obviously your seat, steering wheel is plastic. I think that's metal. So yes, go out and get yourself a Teramite T5C. Now I'm an advertisement. I highly recommend it. Let's have a little fun. Let's pick it up, but let's not roll over. There, you saw it struggle a little bit there, backing up, but it worked okay. It's not too steep there. That's my maximum dump height. It's pretty high, but you'd have trouble loading a dump truck with that. Unless it was like a one ton dump truck with the low, slide, low sides on it. I think you could load a dump trailer okay though. Let's turn around and play with the backhoe. That's a quick little example of playing around with the backhoe. It'll definitely dig holes. Let's see. I don't know if I give any perspective on this. This hole's probably, oh, well, I guess it's about up to my waist. We're probably looking at three to four foot deep. Supposedly this machine can dig eight foot, four inches deep. I think that point is gonna be right about here though. You'll be completing your arc out underneath so the eight foot four 
take it with a grain of salt. Um, you can't dig eight foot four down six feet out from the machine. You might be able to do that like right almost underneath the machine. It is what it is. Um, it does great for regular small trenching projects or small dirt work stuff. Plenty of power with the backhoe. And yeah, so the backhoe works really well. It's a little sensitive on the controls. It, like anything, it's just getting used to it though. So one other thing I wanted to address is ground speed. A lot of people complain about the ground speed on these machines being too slow. I can kind of see that because um, it only has one gear range. It's neither fast nor super slow. It's kind of in between. That's my perspective. But it's never been that much of an issue for me. If you're doing a long haul with this, I mean, why would you do a long haul with a really small front end loader? You're not carrying that much dirt anyway. I don't know. It It's fine for me when you have it throttled all the way up. It's a decent ground speed. I don't know if you're going maybe five miles an hour. I could see how ground speed could be a complaint, but it's never really been an issue for me. And backward speed is pretty reasonable as well. The lack of a low range, according to the operator's manual and what I've read and personal experience, it's basically not lacking a low range. It's just understanding how to use this transmission system. So your tendency from driving a car or something else is if you need more power, you push your throttle gas pedal farther but this is your transmission it's not your throttle your throttle is the hand throttle up top this is your your gearing so if you need more power do you shift up into top gear that's how you go fast in top gear if you need more power in a vehicle you downshift and run at full throttle so really when you come to a hill and start slowing down slow down with the pedal as well don't keep flooring it that's just going to groan and it's not going to help it, it, it doesn't make the machine really go much faster so what you need to do to get more power on a hill is you back off on it so that you're not trying to go as fast that's like using a lower gear basically so that's how this transmission is made to work and i find that it for the most part does that it hurts going that slow sometimes up a hill but it goes up a hill just fine if you let it take its time. The only issue is if it's slippery and you need more wheel spin or you're, need, you're having trouble with traction and you want it to, your wheels to spin faster. That could be a little bit of an issue, but for the most part, it works really fine. This property is not level and it's not super hilly either, but there are some hills here and it works fine. It does a good job. So I just wanted to address that transmission ground speed type concern and say it's never really been a problem for me at least not on this property so anyway i think that about sums everything up and yeah go out and get yourself a termite t5c this is a totally unsponsored video i hope you enjoyed it i hope it's been informative if you've been thinking about buying a, a termite t5c front and loader backhoe i hope you learned something i hope this helps answer some questions i would not shy away from buying one but it is what it is. Know what you're getting when you when you buy it. It's a nice kind of commercial-ish type piece of machinery that's very small and has its capabilities and it has its limitations. But for me, it's worked out great and I highly recommend it. So if you like this video, please comment, like, and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next one.